And what we discovered in, uh, in late December of 1994 was that as the Ulysses craft began measuring the uh, polarity of the south pole of the sun, the readings were much lower than had been expected. The scientists said, well, that's interesting. Let's go to the equator and see what's happening at the equator. And it took a few more months, and by May of 1995, the Ulysses craft was uh, at the equator of the sun and again took readings. And to the surprise of our researchers, they discovered that the readings were very low and very similar to the readings that they had taken at the South Pole. So they said, well, let's go to the North Pole and see what's happening. So the Ulysses craft then traveled to the North Pole, we consider to be the North Pole of the Sun. And what they discovered was this, that the readings from the North Pole, the South Pole, and the equator were very, very similar. There was not much differentiation between North and South Pole. And what scientists are actually saying now is that the Sun has lost its polarity. The Sun has lost the magnetic fields, uh, the polarity of those magnetic fields, and has moved to what is called a steady state magnetic field. And that field is decreasing rapidly. Now, that will be important in just a moment. Uh, so I'll ask you to remember, to, just to hold this, uh, hold this thought, that the sun is losing magnetics, losing its intensity of magnetics very quickly. And we'll come back to that in, uh, in just a few minutes. Jupiter, oh, a beautiful planet. Uh, I love to see these images, these uh, computer-enhanced images taken from, uh, from several different crafts. The storm, this red eye that we see on Jupiter, this storm, uh, apparently uh, unlike any storm we've ever seen on Earth, because this storm was first recorded over 3,000 years ago by Chinese astronomers. And it has been continuously raging in the atmosphere of Jupiter for uh, approximately 3,000 years. Well, as you can see, this storm, the giant red eye in this storm, has a rotational component. You can see that there is a, there's a feel of, of a rotation on that component, or rotational component on this storm. For over 3,000 years, astronomers have seen that rotation in a very specific direction. Uh, something interesting happened in 1986, 1987, uh, uh, synchronistically, perhaps, uh, just about the same time that the sun began going through its changes with the increase in the solar flares and the, and the X-ray bursts. This giant storm began to rotate in the opposite direction and continues to do so today. What would cause a rotation, a shift in an atmospheric phenomenon that has been constant for at least 3,000 years? What would cause that? Well, again, in 1994, uh, not long after uh, the Ulysses craft measured the magnetic fields of the sun, you and I witnessed an outrageous phenomenon by any standards on the giant of Jupiter as we saw uh, through our live cameras uh, a single fragment of something and, and right now we're not even sure what that something was some people believe it may have been a, a comet some believe it may have been an asteroid of some kind a single body moving quickly toward this uh, this giant and within uh, a few days of impact that single fragment breaking into 21 separate fragments and those 21 fragments impacting the, the surface, the gaseous uh, atmosphere in the surface of the Jovian atmosphere. We saw that we witnessed this rare event uh, live in real time. Scientists speculated that this phenomenon would, uh, would affect Earth in several ways. 